Happy Monday, everybody. My name is Brandon Rosa, and welcome to episode 63 of the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly choice of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. Every Monday, this podcast covers new game releases, the previous week's gaming news, and we all earn an Xbox-related fun fact together. This show is on YouTube and podcast services around the world, so please subscribe to your favorite and leave a review. Xboxin10.com, no numbers, is your quick source for links to all of our podcast destinations and social media profiles, which you can follow at Xboxin10. To start, let's talk game releases. The big games out last week were Scully and Fast and Furious Crossroads. The games coming out this week include Hyperscape, Brunch Club, Metamorphosis, Escape from Tethys, Boomerang Fu, Faria, Darketsville Castle, The Alto Collection, Bite the Bullet, Dying Light Hell Raid, EA Sports UFC 4, and Lynn Path of Orchards. Now onto last week's biggest news stories and we have 9 to cover this week. Number 1. Xbox Game Pass Ultimate delivers 100 plus games directly to your mobile device beginning September 15th. Kareem Kujri, Corporate Vice President of Project xCloud at Microsoft, writes on Xbox Wire. Our vision for Project xCloud, Microsoft's cloud gaming technology, is to give you the opportunity to play the games you want with the people you want anywhere you want. Since launching the public preview across North America, Europe, and in South Korea, you've shared stories about the unique ways you've played from the cloud while providing invaluable feedback that helped us improve the experience. Cloud gaming as part of Xbox Game Pass is the next major step in our ongoing vision to put you at the center of the experience to give you more value from your games and membership, and to remove the barriers from play. Last month we laid out our commitment to you, and announced cloud gaming powered by Project X Cloud will be part of the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate at no additional cost. Today we're excited to share more of what you can expect. Beginning September 15th, Game Pass Ultimate members can play more than 100 games from the cloud on their Android phone or tablet. Cloud gaming will launch in beta for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate members in 22 markets to ensure stability as we scale the feature to millions of gamers. These 100 high quality games will include Minecraft Dungeons, Destiny 2, Tell Me Why, Gears 5, Yakuza Kiwami 2, and more. And we're committed to providing day one access to new titles from Xbox Game Studios as part of the Xbox Game Pass. It's our intent to make those games available in the cloud from the day they release. We'll have more to share about the full catalog of games as we approach launch. As the world around us changes and entertainment is readily available no matter the device, it is our vision to make games accessible in a variety of scenarios. All the experiences you expect on Xbox and your gaming profile travel with you on mobile, including your friends list, achievements, controller settings, and saved game progress. You can continue your Gears 5 campaign while traveling away from your home or console, or if a sibling or roommate is using the TV, you can still complete strikes with friends in Destiny 2. Cloud Gaming also unlocks new couch co-op experiences with traditional online games. Sail off to adventure and see if thieves on your tablet while a friend plays alongside you on your console, right in the same room. Cloud Gaming removes the need to wait until you can access your console in order to play your favorite games. Just pick up your phone or tablet and play the games you want anytime you want. Now I have a lot of thoughts on this, but let's transition to story number two and explain my frustration. Number two, Apple explains why Xbox Game Pass won't launch on iOS. Microsoft responds. And it makes that IGN writes. Microsoft has responded to Apple's reasoning behind not currently allowing the Xbox Game Pass app to be published on Apple's App Store. A Microsoft spokesperson spoke to The Verge and said, quote, Apple stands alone as the only general purpose platform to deny consumers from cloud gaming and game subscription services like Xbox Game Pass, end quote. The full statement from Microsoft is as follows. Quote, our testing period for the Project xCloud preview app for iOS has expired. Unfortunately, we do not have a path to bring our vision of cloud gaming with Xbox Game Pass Ultimate to gamers on iOS via the Apple App Store. It consistently treats gaming apps differently, applying more lenient rules to non-gaming apps even when they include interactive content. All games available in the Xbox Game Pass catalog are rated for content by independent industry rating bodies such as the ESRB and regional equivalents. We are committed to finding a path to bring cloud gaming with Xbox Game Pass Ultimate to the iOS platform. We believe that the customer should be at the heart of the gaming experiences, and gamers tell us what they want to play, connect, and share anywhere no matter where they are, we agree. Microsoft's response is to Apple's statement which reads as followed, quote, The App Store was created to be a safe and trusted place for customers to discover and download apps and a great business opportunity for all developers. Before they go on our store, all apps are reviewed against the same set of guidelines that are intended to protect customers and provide a fair and level playing field to developers. Our customers enjoy great games and apps from millions of developers and gaming services can absolutely launch in the App Store, so as long as they follow the same set of guidelines applicable to all developers including submitting games individually for a review and appearing in charts and search. In addition to the App Store, developers can choose to reach all iPhone and iPad users all over the web through Safari and other browsers on the App Store, end quote. While I'm so excited to get my hands on cloud gaming and try Project X Cloud as an iPhone and iPad user, I'm so disappointed that they could not find a way with Apple and iOS. 
After seeing some other opinions online, it seems like they could finagle a workaround by using a browser-based option for Xbox Game Pass and Project X Cloud, but I guess time will tell. I could tell you that I've already begun looking at Android devices if they can't find a way with iOS, and who knows, by September 15th, I might make the jump to Android. I've been a loyal iPhone and iPad user for years and years, and I love the devices, but this is just a little ridiculous to me. Number 3. Microsoft isn't renaming Xbox Live and has no plans to discontinue Xbox Live Gold. Tom Warren at The Verge writes, Microsoft isn't planning to rename Xbox Live or discontinue Xbox Live Gold. Rumors of an Xbox Live rename appeared this week after Microsoft announced changes to its services agreement. The software giant stated referring to Xbox Live as the Xbox Online Service, prompting some to assume Xbox Live was going away. Quote, the update to Xbox Online Service in the Microsoft Service Agreement refers to the underlying Xbox service that includes features like cross saves and friend requests, end quote, says a Microsoft spokesperson in a statement to The Verge. Quote, this language update is intended to distinguish the underlying service and the paid Xbox Live Gold subscription. There are no changes being made to the experience of the service or Xbox Live, end quote. Recent rumors have also speculated that Xbox Live Gold is going away or perhaps even being made free. I asked Microsoft to comment on the rumors and the company said, quote, we have no plans to discontinue Xbox Live Gold at this time. It's an important part of gaming on Xbox today and will continue to be so in the future, end quote. Albeit pretty definitive statements, I still think Microsoft and Xbox need to find a solution as they have too many services, subscriptions, and options. We have Xbox Live Gold, Xbox Game Pass, Xbox Game Pass for PC and console, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, Project X Cloud, it's just too much. If you can converge it all down to an Xbox Game Pass subscription, include Gold as it is kind of weird that PC gamers can play for free, but on Xbox console you have to pay for Live, I really think they need to rebrand this, consolidate it, and make it nice and simple going into next gen. Let's see what they have to say at the August event. Number 4. New Microsoft Store Design for Xbox Revealed Joe Scrabbles at IGN writes, Microsoft has revealed a new version of its Microsoft Store for Xbox which will start being released to insiders on August 5th and arrive this fall for all users. Shown off on the Xbox Wire blog, the store is a complete redesign and clearly a newer version of the store design that leaked in June, which would be twice as fast to load, easier to search, and safer. The post only mentions this store with regard to Xbox One, but we've previously heard that the Xbox Series X will have the same UI as Xbox One, so we'll be looking at the next-gen store too. The store should start up within 2 seconds and be faster to browse and watch trailers within. Trailers can be played in line while browsing, i.e. without opening the game's store page, and can be set to autoplay. Any of you Xbox gamers, go check out the videos and the screenshots on the store to redesign. It looks so fluid, clean, and neat. So much better than the current version of the store, which takes so long to load. You're trying to look up the game price, the trailer starts, and it's just a mess. Great things going into next gen. Number 5. Halo the Master Chief Collection is getting Xbox PC crossplay this year. Alyssa Mercanty at Games Radar writes, 343 Industries has announced that Halo the Master Chief Collection will be getting Xbox PC crossplay before the end of 2020. The developer said in an update on the Halo website that crossplay, keyboard and mouse support on Xbox, and input-based matchmaking will be added to the Master Chief Collection by the end of 2020. That means console players will get the chance to team up with or fight against PC players with the option to use a mouse and keyboard instead of just a controller. With input-based matchmaking, you'll likely be matched up with players using the same input as you no matter what platform you're on. So I can't claim I got clicked on when I got sniped from well across the map on high ground. Great news for the industry going forward as always, introducing crossplay. I did have the disappointing moment with a friend a few weeks ago when he was on PC and I was on console. We tried to group up and realized for some reason the Master Chief Collection did not have crossplay, but it's good to hear it's coming this year. Number 6. Microsoft's updating Xbox Game Pass branding. Brad Sams at The Rot writes, For the past few weeks we have seen changes to Xbox Live and now we can add Xbox Game Pass to the equation. Microsoft announced today a subtle but important change. The company is rebranding Xbox Game Pass to simply Game Pass. This move distanced the company's Game Pass subscription from being explicitly tied to its gaming console. The company is also changing Xbox Game Pass for PC to simply Game Pass for PC. A quick little tidbit on branding that makes it a little simpler to understand. A step in the right direction, but I still think, as I mentioned earlier, there's room for improvement to consolidate these services into a simpler version for everyone. Number 7. Pillars of Eternity Director is working on a new project that isn't avowed. Richard Wakeling at GameSpot writes, Developer Obsidian Entertainment has recently been busy ever since Microsoft acquired the studio back in 2018. It just launched Grounded, their acnophobic survival game in early access on both PC and Xbox One, and just last month it unveiled the first-person RPG Avowed during Microsoft's Xbox Series X showcase event. As it turns out, the famed RPG developer also has another project in the works. Studio design director John Sawyer, who led the development on Fallout New Vegas and both Pillars of Eternity games, has revealed that he's working on something new. 
This tidbit of information cropped up after Sawyer posted a blog post on Tumblr describing his job role at Obsidian. In response to the post, the Twitter user expressed sadness that Sawyer isn't overseeing his own project, to which the design director replied that he's heading up something new that isn't avowed. Quick insight into the studio that was arguably Microsoft's biggest acquisition. Really crazy to think that Obsidian is working on the Outer Worlds, Grounded, Avowed, and another AAA project. Can't wait to see all of what this studio has cooking up. Number 8, Rocksteady confirms it is working on a Suicide Squad game. Wesley Yanpool at Eurogamer writes, Rocksteady has confirmed an earlier Eurogamer report that it is working on a Suicide Squad game. In a tweet showing an image of a decrepit looking Superman with a target on his head, the Batman Arkham developer revealed the Suicide Squad game will be announced on the 22nd of August during the DC Fandom event. I can appreciate Rocksteady as one of the best developers out there, although I've only played a little bit of Arkham Asylum, and I did love Arkham VR. I'm seeing mixed feelings about them working on a Suicide Squad game, but I'm excited to see it myself this month at their event. And number 9, Spider-Man is coming to Marvel's Avengers as a PlayStation exclusive. Matt Kim at IGN writes, PlayStation has confirmed that Spider-Man will be coming to Marvel's Avengers as a free PlayStation exclusive. Spider-Man will be released post-launch, so he won't be available when Marvel's Avengers is released on September 4th. In a new PlayStation blog post, Marvel's Avengers confirmed that Spider-Man will be added to the playable roster in early 21, quote, at no additional cost, end quote, to anyone who owns the base game. As previously leaked, Spider-Man will be exclusive to PlayStation owners. I had to throw this in there as this is extremely disappointing for us Xbox gamers. I am interested in this game now after the last showcase it had. Locking arguably the biggest Marvel character in the world away from Xbox gamers and PC gamers I think is just bad business. It also stinks I think for PlayStation gamers as there is no way Spider-Man will be integral to the story or the game as they build this game as a platform for years to come and enjoy. How are they going to make two versions of the story for Xbox and PC and then PlayStation with exclusive Spider-Man? I think this is just bad business and this reminds me of Destiny 1 and 2 and all the exclusive content PlayStation had over Xbox. It's disappointing, I don't like it, and I hope this ends in the industry. As always we end our show with a fun fact about Xbox and this one's going to be a quick rundown of the confirmed games for Project xCloud given the upcoming launch on September 15th. Although Microsoft is promising more than 100 games playable on xCloud at launch, here's a preview of titles confirmed today. Ark Survival Evolved, Bleeding Edge, Costume Quest 2, Crackdown 3 Campaign, Destiny 2, F1 201, Forza Horizon 4, Gears of War Ultimate Edition, Gears of War 4, Gears 5 Ultimate Edition, Grounded, Halo 5 Guardians, Halo Wars Definitive Edition, Halo Wars 2, Halo of Master Chief Collection, Halo Spartan Assault, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, Killer Instinct Definitive Edition, Max The Curse of Brotherhood, Minecraft Dungeons, The Outer Worlds, Ori in the Blind Forest Definitive Edition, Ori in the Will of the Wisps, Quantum Break, Record Definitive Edition, Rise Son of Rome, Sea of Thieves Anniversary Edition, State of Decay 2 Juggernaut Edition, Sunset Overdrive, Super Lucky's Tale, Tell Me Why, The Bard's Tale Trilogy, Wasteland 2 Director's Cut, Wasteland 3, Wasteland Remastered, and Yakuza Kiwami 2. Thank you all for listening to another episode of the Xbox and 10 Podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. If you like the show, please subscribe to your favorite podcast service, share it with your friends, leave a review, and follow on all social media at Xbox and 10. This past week, I've been playing Fall Guys on Steam, which I just want to come to every platform, including Xbox. It's such dumb fun, and I want more of my friends to play it. And of course, Call of Duty Warzone. My name is Brian Rose. You can follow me on Xbox at Brozo93. I hope you all have a great week, and keep on gaming.